Good morning and welcome. We're going to commence our Christmas Day service, turning to the words of hymn number 77, Joy to the world, the Lord is come, let earth receive her King. It's in page 206, and we'll stand together as we praise and worship the Lord. <laughs> Thank you. 
let's just unite together in prayer. Eternal God and loving Heavenly Father, we thank Thee that we can have a Christmas Day service here again in the house of God. And we call unto Thee this day in the precious and adorable name of Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. And we ask Thee in the merit and ground of His precious blood that Thou would be mindful of us merciful to us, and come and minister this day. Lord, we need thee. We want thee. We think of thy wonderful promise where two or three are gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst. We thank thee that thou art here with us. We ask thee that thou would make thy presence a conscious reality to all our hearts. We say to thee again today, come by us, Lord. We're so unworthy. We're so undeserving of the least of thy blessing. And, O oh God, and yet we've come to give thee thanks. We rejoice and celebrate in the wonder of the Christmas period. And we're especially focused on the birth of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. And, Lord, while we think of many gifts, we bless thee for the greatest of all gifts. We're glad that we read in the scriptures, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. And we recognize, Lord, when people present those gifts, we do and have said thank you. And Lord, we've truly meant it from our heart. And oh God, we have expressed that gratefulness that someone was thinking about us. And we want to thank thee that thou has been thinking about us from all eternity. We've been on thy heart. And Lord, in thy mind, and we want to thank thee for the great scheme and plan of redemption. And we do thank thee today for the incarnation and virgin birth of Jesus Christ. We're glad, Lord, in that message. And we think of our world with all its fear and all its turmoil. We think, Lord, not only of the whole world, but we think of our own wee province here in Northern Ireland. We think of the towns and cities that make up our province of Ulster and we pray for divine visitation and help. We say to thee, Lord, send thy light and truth. Open the eyes of many to the reality of God with us, God incarnate. And we pray that thou be pleased to bring men and women even to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. Bless our young people to this end. Bless our boys and girls to this end. We thank you for them. And Lord, we just look to thee uh, even again for those who will be absent this morning due to sickness and whatever from the house of God. Lord, we pray too that as they join with us via the internet, that thou would remember them in their homes and that thou would grant them that same conscious sense of thy presence, even as we experience that divine presence here now. We commit our service to thee. Own these old hymns that we're singing. Lord, we ask thee to bless to us the reading of the Holy Scriptures. Remember us, Lord, even as we turn to thy word and leave a thought this Christmas day. Use thy word, we pray at this hour even for thy glory. And Lord, use it in such a way that thy word will be a nail in a sure place, a light in the darkness. And Lord, we pray that it will be hope to many who are feeling hopeless at this time. Lord, undertake for us now. Bless us and be with us and do us good. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to turn to a lovely hymn. Hymn number 75. It's a hymn away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the bright sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. Hymn number 75. It's in page 206. And we'll stand again as we sing. Thank you. 
me to Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 2, we're going to read from verse 8, Luke chapter 2, verse 8, let's hear the word of God, reading of course from the authorized verse, Luke chapter 2, verse 8, and there were in the same country Shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. Amen. We know the Lord will stamp with his own approval and blessing this reading of his own precious, infallible word. Now we're going to have a poem that's recited and recorded by my daughter Joanna from Miami. I would just like to say a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to everyone in Carrydale Free Presbyterian Church this morning. It is very unfortunate that I'm not able to attend this morning's service in person, but I will take the next few minutes to provide a closing thought for 2021. It is with no doubt that 2021 has been another very difficult year for many of us within the congregation, especially as we've had to say final goodbyes to loved ones when we just weren't ready. As many of you know, in September of this year, the Lord called home Mary Liggett, my own grandmother and best friend. Therefore, I would like to take the next few minutes to share this poem with everyone today. The poem is entitled, Friendship. A friend is talking, listening, sharing. A friend is patient, Confiding, caring. A friend shares a secret which is never retold. A friend has a hand always willing to hold. A friend will comfort your innermost fears. A friend will always share your tears. A friend shares pain. A friend shares pleasure. A friend is an everlasting treasure. A friend is always at the end of your phone. A friend is there when you feel alone. A friend is for giving, not for receiving. A friend is a cuddle when you're leaving. A friend overlooks your odd little ways. A friend will cheer up your gloomiest days. A friend never judges, is always on your side. A friend agrees with whatever you decide. A friend is brightness, a friend is sun. A friend shares sadness, a friend shares fun. And when you have to part, 
as only God will insist. A friend remains in your heart and will forever be missed. Merry Christmas, everyone. And we do thank Joanna for this beautiful poem this morning on friendship. I'm just thinking of the words in Proverbs 17 and 17. It says, a friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. So we do thank her for recording this and sending it over at very short notice. We were to have the Garrett family come and play flutes for us and perhaps sing a verse or two. Uh, they're unable to be with us uh, due to illness at this hour. Many other families are absent because they have to isolate and some have other colds and things that have happened and they just cannot be present with us today. And I just want to welcome all of you who are here in the Lord's name and for all who are online, we're glad to have you and we pray that the Lord will bless you and we trust that you'll have a lovely Christmas day. Just a few announcements in relation to tomorrow, we'll have the usual services, 11.30 and 7, preceded by the times of prayer and the will of God, I'll be the preacher, and we'll try to keep within a reasonable time frame for next Lord's Day, in light of the fact that it is uh, traditionally a Boxing Day. Then do remember the Wednesday prayer meeting at 8 o'clock, it will go ahead, there'll be no children's meeting, and we look to the Lord for his help as we seek to close the year. And then do remember next Lord's Day, it'll be the first Lord's Day of 2022, and just pray that the Lord will help us, give me a motto text for himself, a motto text that'll set the tone for the whole church for the new year, and we look to the Lord, that the Lord might continue to help us and prosper us uh, as a congregation, prosper you individually, but also prosper us as a church according to his mind uh, and according to his will. Let's unite together in a wee word of prayer. Merciful God and loving Heavenly Father, as we linger on in thy presence, we think especially of those who are absent from us at this time. We realize, Lord, that not only our own family circle, but many other families connected to the church have lost precious loved ones. Lord, some have already been through this process of losing a loved one and experiencing the first Christmas without them. But we think at this time, especially of the Campbell family, and we commend David and Fiona and the family circle to thee. And we pray for the comfort of God and the Father of mercies to be unto them all that they need. Lord, we ask thee too to remember as well at this time the... Dobbin family down there in Bush Mills. We thank you for Drew and the funeral service on Thursday. The testimony that was left. We thank you for saving him, keeping the work of God in Bush Mills open. And we pray you'll bless that work. We pray it'll go on from strength to strength. We pray you'll comfort uh, Jackie and Andrew and the family circle at this time. We think too, Lord, of the very sad and sudden death of Billy Coulter, and we, we commend Gillian and Calvin and the respective families, even to thee at this hour. And we thank you for Billy's life and testimony. We know he was a gentleman. We know he was a gem. We know he was a good man. We're glad, Lord, he was a, a godly man, a gracious man, a man who gave of his time and all his love for the work of God. We thank you for every member of him. And Lord, we commit the family to thee and we pray that thou will minister grace to them and what for them will be a, a, a sad time. Lord, we ask thee to remember as well all our families, those that are absent from us, those that are shielding at this time, uh, those, Lord, that have been testing positive for this wretched COVID. And we commend them to thee. We pray they'll heal speedily and quickly. We look to thee for others that have colds and bugs and flus. We think of those that have other circumstances that have happened, Lord. You know all about them. And they can't physically be here this morning. And we commend them to thee and to thy care. For those in hospital, minister to them. Those that need operations, meet their need. Lord, we commend the doctors and nurses still working today. The fire service that's working. We think of our uh, 
police service that's still working and we commend them to thee and ask thee to bless them and be with them. We look to thee at this time to remember all who minister as well to those that are homeless and we think of the many who are homeless around Belfast and we pray that even this day that they might find good shelter and have uh, food and, uh, and warm clothing and accommodation that will help them even in the midst of their difficulty. Remember families that are hurting and struggling and you know the multiplicity of reasons as to why this is so. We commend them to thee. We commend ourselves to thee now as we turn to thy precious word. And we pray you might use thy word this day even for thy glory. Lord, we plead the cleansing, covering power of the blood. And we pray that thou will remember us, show us a token for good and bless us in our souls. Lord, even make this day a day as families get together, a time in thy presence before the Lord, when we're filled with the awe and the wonder, even of the birth of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Saviour of the world. Hear and answer prayer for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Now, my text today is taken from Luke chapter 2, verse 10. And it reads as follows, Luke chapter 2 and verse 10. It says, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And I want us to think for a time this morning of a day of glad tidings and great joy. And what I want for you is to discover and experience this great joy for yourself. Now, these words, verse 10, form a part of the inspired record of what the angel said to the shepherds on the very night that the Christ child was born. You can read the rest of the verses, verse 11 and 12, uh, and you will uh, discover that that contains the rest of that message. But for this morning, I want just to focus on the opening part of the message, mainly in the words, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Now, there's 21 references to the words great joy in the Bible. The first reference is 1 Kings 4 and 10. The last reference is 3 John chapter 1, verse 4. But do you know that at least two of these references, that's two out of the 21, are a reference about great joy connected to the birth of Jesus Christ at Bethlehem? In Matthew chapter 2, verse 10, for example, reference to the wise men. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And here in Luke 2 and 10. Now, isn't it wonderful to know? Isn't it wonderful to discover that the birth of Christ is associated with great joy? Now, we live in a world of bad news. We live in a day that's really a day of fear. A day of gloom and doom, rather than a day of gladness and delight. Do you know today that many don't associate the birth of Christ and the story of the Christ child with great joy? You see, for many today, it's not a day of great joy. I I think of a journalist that I read about recently. He was sitting in a fast food outlet. He's watching people. He's um, looking around, and I suppose we could say that he says people watching. And he sees a young girl celebrating Christmas with her mum. There was presence in the table. He can hear the young girl saying, "I miss you, mummy. Mummy, I do love you." And she replies, "Well, I love you too, baby." Beyond the booth, sitting was another woman, carefully but casually watching them. And then the journalist sees another couple near the doorway. And with his journalistic mind and eye, he puts it all together. The waiting woman is a social worker. This was a supervised and structured visit. Here was a biological mother and an estranged daughter, and they're spending an hour together in a fast food joint celebrating Christmas. Remember the word celebrate means to rejoice, to revel, to appreciate. It's supposed to be a display of hope and joy and happiness. And then in a few minutes, there's a nod. The couple from the door move toward the table, and this is what they say, sorry, Lucy, 
It's time to go. You see, these were the foster parents to take the girl home and the mother's left alone at the table and she's sitting there in tears. You see, this morning, there is a delightful side to Christmas, but listen to me carefully, there's a darker side and we rarely acknowledge that in the church. And sadly, we Christians can create a fantasy that is not real, a fantasy that's far from reality, a fantasy that that is far removed from actuality. Think of the best of homes, homes where the great truth of the gospel is rejoiced in. But even in the best of Christian homes, there can be tension, there can be tears, there can even be Tantrums. You see, for many today, Christmas time is an excuse to get drunk. The holiday period is another excuse for daddy to be with his new family. Christmas day is a day for mommy to be with the new boyfriend. Can you think of families coping with the death of a loved one? Isn't it so hard? A loved one has died old age, illness, or there's been an accident, or, or maybe someone has been murdered. I was reading and shocked about the murder of a 30-year-old mother of four called uh, Miss or Mrs. Morgan in Belfast, in North Belfast. Only one of many. And then let's add in those who have committed suicide. You see, many people are not truly happy at Christmas time. We should praise God. But many do not praise God. Because many are not happy. Many are hurting. And they need help. And what sort of help do they need? Well, they need to discover that this is a day of glad tidings and a day of great joy. Now, you're well aware we live in a world of bad news, sad news, a day of trials and, and turmoils, a, a day of darkness and depravity. You think of the problems among the young people that they face at school, university and work. Think of the problem of debt today, the problem of depression, the problem of struggling with disease at work in the body, the problem of drunkenness, the, the, the problem of drug addiction, the, the, the problem of domestic violence. You know, I was thinking again of our major cities, our major towns, the problems that are there in society. The, the, the child abuse, the homosexuality, the rape, the strife, the fights, the immoral living. And it's all due to what? It's all due to the absence of great joy. It's all due because of the sinfulness of men's hearts. And what do they need on a day like Christmas Day? They need to discover a day of glad tidings and great joy. Let me share with you three things that come to mind just last evening. The reality of this joy defined. You see, great joy, the angel says. What is joy? We were singing joy to the world. Let's think of that as a principle. Real joy is a real true experience. See, joy, J-O-Y, not just a girl's name. It's not just a, an emotion. It's Jehovah first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. It's others next. That, that's love not only to God, but love to your neighbor. And then yourself last. When you have a true love for the Lord and then a true love for others, you will overcome yourself. And many, sadly, are lovers of themselves. True joy is different from happiness. Now, happiness depends on happenings. Gifts received. Gifts bought. Bestowed. A, a good hearty meal. When we're warm and feeling well, we have good health. And we enjoy the pleasure for a moment. It's all okay. But that's not true joy. That's Happiness, maybe a sister to joy, we could say, but not real true joy. You see, true joy is a joy that's deep down in the um, depth of our soul. It's joy in the soul. And true joy is connected to the coming of Christ. You know, true joy is even connected to his crucifixion. 
True joy is connected to his calling into the world, his counsel, his care, his comfort of his people. See, true joy is not connected to lots of money. Do you know there's miserable millionaires and billionaires in the world? I'm not thinking about those who are tight. I'm thinking about those who are sad and lonely people. And I have some people at times phone me up and say, "Um, Mr. McLaughlin, I'm, I'm lonely. And it's not because they don't have money to do things and go places. True joy is not even connected to good health. Although good health's a a tremendous thing to enjoy. People who have good health can still be full of fear and worry. And some even worry that they're not sick. and, and, And they have good health. And they're worried that they're going to become ill. True joy doesn't depend on circumstances. It doesn't even depend on happy families. No, it depends on Christ. You see, the Savior prayed, John 17, verse 13 that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. My joy. He's praying to the Father, even right now, that you will know and experience the reality of his joy in your heart and life. And this true joy is connected with the birth of Christ. The angels knew it. And they told it to the shepherds. This is a, a day of good tidings, of great joy. True joy at the coming of Christ. True joy at his crucifixion. True joy at his coronation. Over there in the book of Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 12, and in the verse 2, thinking of Christ and thinking about the crucifixion, it says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. You see, he's a wonderful savior. He has come in the fulfillment of many scriptures. He come to do the will of him that sent him. He finished the work, the atoning work of of redemption for his people. And and he is now focused on succoring and satisfying uh, his people. Did you know, ladies, in the 20th century, the most popular perfume was not Chanel 5. Chanel 5 is very expensive, young men. But the most popular perfume in the 20th century was a perfume called Joy. It takes 10,600 jasmine flowers, 28 dozen roses, to make a 30 milliliter bottle of Joy. And a guy by the name of Jean Patov He made this floral fragrance for women and he launched it in the Depression in the 1930s. And when the designer houses uh, weren't able to sell their designer wear, this perfume became very, very popular, especially among the ladies. And it's still very popular. Let me tell you this story. It reported in the Salvation Army that someone had sent a glass jar of the perfume called Joy and they mailed it using the mail service in the United States of America. And the mail service in the United States of America is very good, as Joanna will testify to us at a different time, for we've sent her presents and she has received them. But when this parcel arrived and the person opened it, guess what? The glass bottle had shattered and the perfume had soaked into the box and soaked into the paper tissue. And the the heading in the Salvation Army was this, joy has disappeared. Now let me ask the question, has your joy, your real joy disappeared? Is it gone this Christmas time? What are you focused on? Don't focus on money. Many are focused on money and not on their maker. Many are focused on their career and not Christ. They're they're, they're focused on the pathway of their journey, but not on the personal work of the Savior. How many joyless souls are there today? This Christmas day, this meant to be the most happiest and wonderful day of the year because we're thinking about the birth of Christ. And yet they're they're joyless. They they, they have no joy. They, They have lost joy. Joy has disappeared. You see, this joy is a deep-seated conviction that only comes from knowing in Christ. And only in Christ will he give you the strength to stand, the strength to endure, the strength to praise him, even in the most difficult of days, even when your body's full of pain. The reality of joy defined. Think about the reason of joy declared. 
See, this great joy is connected to three great truths. It's connected to the greatest miracle. The greatest miracle is the incarnation of Christ. First Timothy 3, 16, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. You see, Emmanuel is God with us. So let's think of the self-existent one, the one who is eternal, the great I am, the creator of the universe, our sustainer and provider, um, the one who is absolutely sovereign over the whole of the universe. And this one was the one incarnated in the womb of the virgin. Listen to what Luke 135 says. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Here's the mystery of all mysteries, miracle of all miracles. God became incarnate. Jesus Christ, as the eternal God, took into union with himself a human body, a real true flesh and blood body. And he knows by human experience what it's like to be a real true man or woman in the earth. You see, he's a real man, a remarkable man. A righteous man, a redeeming man. And he experienced weariness, hunger. He wept. He sighed. He felt the impact of death and disease. He he felt the impact of human depravity. He, He knew about the darkness of sin and Satan in the world. And here's the greatest condescension of all. Not just great humiliation, great condescension. Because he who became a man became a servant until he reached the point at Calvary where he said, I'm a worm and no man. Came from heaven to earth, from the bosom of the father to the womb of the virgin, so that he could be born at Bethlehem, from the realms of glory into a world of grief and pain and sorrow. I remember a lady saying to me one time in Scotland, what did the Lord Jesus ever do for me? And I replied, He was born for you. He lived a sinless life for you. He died an atoning death for you. He rose again bodily from the dead for you. He did it for you. It was not what the angel was saying to the shepherds. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a saviour, which is Christ the Lord. He arose for you. He's coming for you. Here's joy connected with the greatest miracle. Joy connected with the greatest message. You see, there was a time in human history... When Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary. Virgin Mary was a woman, blessed among women. And his birth fulfilled many prophecies, Isaiah 7, 14, Micah 5 and 2. And we, of course, don't know the exact date of when Jesus Christ was born. We're not saying it was the 25th day of December. We, we don't know when he was born. But the fact is, he was born in human history. He did come. It happened according to the scriptures. You see, God always keeps his word. His word is reliable. It's trustworthy. And if he kept his word and fulfilled it in relation to Christ, all these wonderful promises about the Savior, despite times of doubt, despite wondering how they would ever be fulfilled, wondering what way they would ever be fulfilled, his coming is a matter of great joy. You see, his birth announced the abolition of fear. The shepherds were afraid. They were petrified. They rushed into the presence of the Lord. The supernatural appearance of an angel and just one angel terrified them witless. It's a reminder of the um, presence of fear in the human heart. Fear's there because of our sin. We're all born sinners. And the only way to overcome the, this fear, the Bible says, perfect love casteth out fear. Jesus Christ is the very embodiment of that perfect love. And if we fill our mind who he is and what he's like and what he has done, remember we're told here a saviour who is Christ the Lord. Who is he? Well, well, he's God incarnate. Why did he come? To seek and to save those who are lost. What has he done? Oh, he did this for us. Let me ask, who or what do you fear this morning? Here's one of the 365 fear knots in the Bible. The world is full of fear. Maybe you fear death, fear the future, fear uncertainty, fear financial crash, fear that's an unknown uncertainty. The Lord Jesus was born to abolish fear. The psalmist said, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, therefore will not be fear. But his birth also announced the Appropriation of joy. You see, 
It's not just joy for today. It's joy forever. The Lord Jesus came to provide and impart and give real, true, lasting, eternal joy. The joy of the Lord, Nehemiah said, is your strength. You see, the joy of true Bible-believing Christianity, it's real. Because here's God's remedy for human sinfulness. And that remedy of human, for human sinfulness is intended to promote and proclaim this lasting joy. We just don't focus on Christ in the cradle or focused on Christ and the cross. We want to focus on Christ's crown now in glory. The one who has created us, the one who came for us, crucified for us, is now crowned and lives for us. He's Lord of all. He's Lord of glory. Do you know this joy is connected to the greatest means? This angel announced a saviour who is Christ the Lord. He has power and authority. He's accessible this morning. He is approachable. He is able. He's able to save to the uttermost all that come unto God from him. Great joy. God has provided a, a wonderful Savior. Savior from sin's penalty, power, pleasure, and even one day from sin's presence. Are you saved this morning? Do you know Christ? Have you received him as your Lord and Redeemer? Do you know your need of him? Have you bowed the knee to him? Have you said, Lord, I'm a sinner. I've got a soul. I need to be saved. This joy is connected to this means. A Savior who is Christ the Lord. One final thing. Think the results of this joy disclosed. One angel announcing no ordinary baby. A baby that's really a saviour, Christ the Lord, the promised Messiah. Not just a healer, not just a teacher, not just a miracle worker. But when he announced this, there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts filled the sky with stars. An impressive sight. We, we sing, hark the herald angels sing. You see, these angels weren't just watching. They were not just mere spectators. This scene would have given you goosebumps. That, that would, scene would have made the hair stand on the back of your head. You see, the birth of Christ was a joyous thing. Because the birth of Christ was really the beginning of the Calvary road. The birth of Christ led the baby to Bethlehem, but on then to Jerusalem, to, to Calvary. I want you to see the connection. And it's a marvelous display of the grace of God. Is it any wonder the scripture says, let all the angels worship him? That first Christmas, Mary, Joseph, the, the angels, the shepherds, they're all filled with this wonderful, great joy. This was the dawn of a new day. This was the day of salvation, a day of deliverance from darkness. And they could joy in his presence. They wanted to praise him. They could joy because of his peace. They got joy because of his power. They, they got joy because of his pardon. Here's the results of this joy. Joying in the presence of God. Experiencing his peace, his pardon, and his power. All connected to this baby being a savior. Christ the Lord. I trust this morning that we'll discover this as a day of great joy. We're going to sing in closing. Turning to the lovely hymn, just three verses. Hymn number 81. Hymn number 81. We'll sing verses 1 and 3 and verse 6. Hymn number 81, verses 1, 3 and 6. Thank you. 
just bow in prayer. Merciful God and loving Heavenly Father, we thank Thee from our hearts for this news that the angel brought to the shepherds, a day of glad tidings, a day of the gospel, a day of great joy. And we pray that we will learn and discover this joy defined for ourselves. Help us to remember that it's in Christ and not in our circumstances. Help us to remember, Lord, that we discover this great joy through the birth of Christ, the greatest miracle, the greatest message, for the greatest means. And we pray, Lord, that we will have this joy even disclosed to our own selves, where we'll praise Thee forevermore. We think of families today again who are hurting at this Christmas time, sad homes. Lord, there's many, and we've mentioned some, but we mention also the Seton family. We commend Lynette and Eric to thee. We ask you to bless and be with them and their family at this time. And many others, Lord, in our families, and even in this church family who are absent from us. We think of Bobby and Sadie. We ask thee, Lord, to remember Wesley and Rita as well in particular. We think of Harriet and the Dorman family. And we ask you to remember Gareth and his need. And Lord, there's so many others were conscious of this in relation to time. But we pray too for the Lewis and the Hegarty family. We remember them and their need. And even the Irvine family too. The Garrett family. Lord, just part us now in your fear. And with your favor. We pray that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of thyself and the communion of the Holy Spirit will be upon us both now and evermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you today.